In this lab, we are going to practice database normalization using Microsoft Physio. So the first thing we need to do is create a new diagram. So you're going to go into Microsoft Visio and you're going to click File, and then New. And if you don't already see Crow's Foot Notation over here, you can find it in the uh, software categories. You'll usually see Crow's Foot Notation in there. Um, or you can search for it if you can't find it. You can search for Crow's Foot Notation. So we're going to create a new Crow's Foot Notation diagram, just like we did before. We did this previously. And on the left-hand side, you've got some uh, objects that you can click and drag. The first thing we need to do is click and drag over an entity. So I'm going to start by uh, with this entity. I'm going to zoom in just so it's easier to see it. I'm going to populate this entity with some, uh, with some attributes and an entity name. And we're going to normalize that table. So we're going to kind of do this together. We're going to normalize that table. And as we normalize it, we're going to be modifying our ER diagram in Visio. So you should make your diagram look similar to this. You'll have a patient table and a patient visit table. You'll have the same attributes here. Uh, your colors won't look the same as mine. I just made mine higher contrast so that it's easier to see uh, in a video. But if you don't recall how to do it, um, you'll click over here. So for example, if I wanted to add an attribute, I click the attribute and I'll just drag it in like so. And then I could type in that attribute name. Of course, I have all the attributes I need, so I won't be doing that. Uh, if you want to, in the top, if you want to change what type of attribute it is, so for example, over here, you might um, have to add the foreign key on here. So you'll right click and you can set primary or set foreign key. Same with the visit date. So if we talk about this for just a second, you've got a patient who has a primary key uh, and you have a patient visit whose primary key is the patient key and the visit date. So the combination of the patient key and the visit date is what makes the patient visit unique. Um, one thing we're missing on this ER diagram is the relationship. So I'm going to click and drag my relationship line over here. And I'm going to drag this over to oops, and make sure you connect it to the whole table, not to an attribute. So I'll do the same thing here where it turns green. There we go. And the other thing I need to do is change the, uh, um, the relationships on the end. I think I showed you this before, but it's generally a good idea uh, when you use these to increase the, uh, the size um, of the line. So I'm going to click over here to line. I'm going to go to weight. I'm going to change mine to a three point because um, that's big enough for me to see it. So now I can see those relationships. So let's read this real quick. We have a patient which can have many visits, right? So a patient can have zero or many visits and a visit can have exactly one patient, one and only one patient. You can't have more than one patient for a visit. So we have to change this. So as I told you before, the uh, this symbol over here on the right side of that relationship line means the end. The other one is the beginning. Uh, so we're going to right click and change the begin symbol to be one and only one. And then we're going to change the end symbol to be zero or many. There we go. So now my patient has zero or many visits, and my visit can have one and only one patient. So go ahead and finish this on your side. You can pause the video and make the same, uh, the same two tables with the primary keys and the foreign keys and the relationship and all that stuff, and then we'll pick up. So one of the obvious problems you might notice in this table, so we're going to begin normalizing this. And as we look for functional dependencies and things like that, um, the symptoms. When you go to the doctor, many times you have more than one symptom. So that would be a repeating value in that horizontal record. So when you look horizontally in this table at a record, you might see repeating values. So that's certainly something that we want to take care of uh, as we normalize. So one way to take care of this, now you might be tempted to say, okay, I'll have a symptom one, symptom two, symptom three. But as we discussed before, that's not the best way to handle this. So instead, we're going to create a new table for symptoms. So you'll create a table like this. You can see I have the table name patient visit symptoms. And I have no attributes other than my primary key and my foreign key here. So patient key and visit date. But I have to have some other attributes here. Now remember, symptoms, we want to move to a new table. This is the new table we're moving it to. So I'm simply going to click on it. I'm going to drag it over to my new table. So now I've got my symptoms in my new table. So next we have to put our relationship in. 
So we're going to have a relationship between our patient visit and our symptoms. Oh, if you recall, in most cases, patients, when they have a visit, could have multiple symptoms. But a symptom for a visit would only relate to one visit. Uh, and that's, again, one of those areas that, that can be confusing for some students is they'll have a tendency to say, well, a patient, um, a symptom could appear in many different visits. Uh, while, yes, a specific symptom, you know, for example, high blood pressure could be a symptom that uh, many patients will have in many different visits. But a specific symptom from a specific visit will only appear in one visit. So you have to look at these keys. So with the existence of these keys, what does that relationship look like? So in this case, let's go ahead and put our relationship line in. So we'll draw that in. And once again, I'm going to increase the size. So I'm going to go to format shape. And I'm going to go to line. And I'm going to increase the size of this line. So we'll do 2.5 point font again. All right, so a patient visit, uh, can it have one symptom and only one symptom? No, that would be incorrect. And same with the other direction. So I'm gonna right click. You can see this is the end point over here. I know that has to be my many. So I'm gonna set my end symbol to zero or more. And I'm gonna set my beginning symbol to one and only one. There we go. So. Now we have a, uh, the correct relationship here, a patient's visit symptom. So symptoms can only appear on one and only one visit, and a visit can have zero or many different symptoms for that specific visit. Now, taking a look at this table, the patient visit, we can still normalize a few things. First, one thing you might notice is doctor notes. Um, is that a repeating value? And that could go back to a business rule. So. The question would be, does a visit have a single narrative from a doctor, like a paragraph of written text, or are there multiple sequences of notes that might be in there for a single visit? If it's multiple sequences of notes, then yes, we would want to move that to another table to normalize it. But if there's only going to be one set of notes per visit, according to the business rules, then we can leave it as is. In this case, we're going to leave it as is and assume that every time they have a visit, it's, uh, it's just one note per visit. But again, it, it depends on the business rules. This is one of those things that goes back where we would go back to that earlier documentation that we've done. So another thing that might be a, a, a dependency in here is take a look at the drop reason. Um, so we talked about nulls, right? We don't want to have null values uh, splattered all over our table. And if you think about it, if a patient has a visit and they're not being dropped from the study, and if you recall, this Westlake database project that we're doing in this uh, for this lab uh, is a is a clinical trial or a clinical study where they may drop patients over time from the study for a variety of reasons. Um, so they might have to document that reason, but it's not going to be common that they drop a patient. So for the most part, that field is almost always going to be null until or if and when they drop that patient. So that probably needs to uh, go into a separate table. So let's go ahead and create a new table for that. So I've created a table, as you can see down here, called dropped patient. The uh, patient key and the date dropped form the primary key in this table. And the field that I want to move over is going to be drop reason. So I'm going to move the drop reason over here, just like I did before. Uh, continue or drop, I no longer need because we don't have to say in the visit whether they're dropped. If we're dropping a patient, we're simply going to create a record over here to indicate that the patient is now dropped. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that from our patient visit. So now I've got my dropped patient table down here. Uh, and actually, I'm going to move this drop reason below the line on mine. So if you recall, this line is going to divide our keys from our regular attributes. So that's why I moved it below that dotted line. Uh, just the proper syntax for this drawing. Now we have to put our relationship in between uh, the, the dropped patient and the visit and or the patient. Now, where or what is the correct relationship for this? Although it was, although, and this is an interesting one because the fields came from the patient visit, but this relationship is actually going to be to the patient because uh, a patient is what is dropped. You'll notice there is no reference in our foreign key here to the visit. The reference is actually to our patient. So we're going to draw our relationship here. Instead of putting in a new relationship line, I'm just going to copy one of the ones I already have. So let's think about this relationship. A patient 
and I'll draw these lines here. So a patient is going to have, um, could they be dropped? Yes, I suppose they could be, but they don't have to be. So patients don't have to have a record in dropped patient. Um, and a dropped patient will always reference exactly one patient. So the relationship here between the patient and dropped patient is going to be one to one. So I'm going to highlight this. So we already know that a patient can have one and only one dropped patient. That's actually probably not correct, right? So if you think about that, could we have a patient that's not yet dropped? Of course we can. So we're going to make that a zero or one because it could be zero or it could be one. Now, if you have a dropped patient, they must exist as a patient. So that's going to be a one to one. So we're going to go to set end symbol and I'll make that one and only one. So now my dropped patient can have one and only one patient and our patients can reference zero or, me or one dropped patient. That means that a patient doesn't have to exist in dropped patient, but if you do have a dropped patient, they must exist as a patient because they're going to reference that table. Now, looking at the patient visit, is there anything else we can normalize here? Um, so each visit, is the blood pressure dependent on the visit itself? It is, because every time they have a visit, there's a new blood pressure, a new weight, a new pulse, and they are functionally dependent on the visit itself. Now, the doctor name is a little different because uh, every time our patient goes to, the, uh, or goes to see this doctor, the doctor name is usually going to be the same or from a set list of doctors. So we're going to see the doctor name repeat in this table quite frequently. If we have five doctors that see all these patients, we're only going to see five names in all these hundreds and hundreds of patient visit records. So that is a repeating value that we want to eliminate. So we want to move that somewhere else. Um, so this is going to be a little bit different how we're going to do before. We've been, we've been um, referencing the foreign keys in our tables that we create, but now we're going to create a table and put the foreign key in our patient visit. Let me show you how this works. So first, let's create a table called um, doctor. So I'm going to make a copy of this other table, and I'm going to call it doctor. And as my primary key, I'm just going to call it doctor key. I don't need a visit date here, so I'm going to get rid of this one. And symptoms is going to become first name. And I'm also going to need a, uh, a last name, and I'm just going to copy it from over here. There we go. So now I've got my first name and my last name. Now, let's think about a relationship first before we do anything else. Um, and by the way, I'm going to remove the foreign key on here because all we know right now is that there's a doctor table and it has a primary key of doctor key. That much we know for sure. Now we have to figure out how a doctor relates to a visit. And by the way, could a doctor relate to a patient? In theory, they could, but uh, the doctor also relates to a visit. And I would say that the doctor relates to a patient through the visit. So a patient has a visit and a visit has a doctor. So by, uh, you know, sort of through that patient visit, they have that relationship to the doctor. So let's go ahead and put that relationship on here. So I'm going to copy and paste my relationship line, just like I've done before. And I'm going to connect these together. I'm going to move this down. If that ever happens to you where it goes one on top of the other, just go ahead and click on, on this part. You can see I get the little double arrow and I can move that up and down to get it out of the way. So look at these relationships. A doctor can have one and only one visit and a visit can have zero or many doctors. Uh, that is probably not how this would work, right? We wouldn't have a relationship that looks like this. Um, it would be the other way around. Like a doctor can have uh, zero or many patient visits to which they're, uh, you know, the attending doctor. And a patient visit will usually have one and only one doctor per visit. So let's go ahead and flip this around. So our begin symbol, which let me get this out of the way. This is the begin side over here. I could tell because it's a single green dot. So the begin side we know is going to be zero or more. And our end side is going to be one and only one. And that actually makes sense, right? Because a patient visit can't be zero or one doctor because you can't have a visit without a doctor. If there's no doctor there, you don't have a visit. Uh, and, a vi and a doctor can have zero or many different patient visits. Okay, now take a look at this. 
We talked about a rule before about where our primary key needs to go. We have a one or a singular side of the relationship, and we have this many side of the relationship. And if we recall, our key always goes on the many side. So we take the primary key from the singular side, and we put that into the many side. So we're going to get rid of this doctor name because we don't need this here, because now we're going to get that from the relationship. And I'm going to copy the doctor key and move it over here. But it's no longer a primary key. Now it's going to be a foreign key. There we go. So now it references that foreign key. So let me zoom this out just a little bit. This is our final diagram. This is what it's going to look like. This is what you're going to turn in for lab 4.1. So to turn this in, you're going to click on file. You're going to click save as. Uh, and first, before I do anything, in case I need to make edits to this later on, I am going to save it to my computer using as the Visio file format. So uh, I'm going to click on browse and I'm just going to call this, I don't know, we'll call it lab 4.1.vsdx. So now I have a, uh, a Visio version of this, uh, of this drawing. So now I have lab 4.1. This I can edit later on, but the version of this that I'm going to turn in, I'm going to click on save as. Uh, and before I do that, as I said, most of these labs, when you do this, you're going to want to put on here your name so I know whose it is. Um, so you're going to go over here and you are going to insert, let me click on insert, a text box. I'm just going to put my name, Brian Green. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so I can see it. So I'm going to make it bold, maybe bump it up a few sizes. There we go. So there's my name on there. And I'm going to save this now. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. But this time, I'm going to change it from Visio Drawing to a JPEG. So I choose JPEG. You'll get a couple additional settings that it'll ask you for. So we're going to choose Baseline. This is fine. I usually bump this up to 80% for the quality, but 75% is fine. You're going to want to use the source for the resolution and the size. You're also going to use source. So source for both of these. Click OK, and that's it. So now we have a JPEG. So if I go and look in my documents, there's my JPEG. There's my Visio version. The Visio version I'm going to keep for myself in case I have to make a change later on. And the JPEG version I'm going to turn in. And I can show you what it looks like. So I'm going to double click on it, and it's just going to open up a JPEG in a viewer. You can view this in a browser. You can view it on anything. I can paste it into a document. Um, you know, what have you. So I could share this with anyone. And in this case, you're going to share it with me. Uh, your tables aren't going to be black like mine. If you stuck with the default color scheme for Visio, they're going to look a little bit different. But if you like, go ahead and be creative and uh, use a different uh, color scheme if you like, something that looks a little nicer. I like a higher contrast color scheme because I find the default color scheme in Visio is a little bit difficult to read when it's smaller. So it's harder to see. That's why for videos, I try to do something like this. Uh, so that's the deliverable for this lab. In lab 4.2, you're going to do the same thing we did here, but you're going to base this off of the logical design that you did for the Grandfield College uh, system for tracking software. So it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, but you're going to do that one on your own. And as I said before, when you do that project on your own, uh, there's going to be a tremendous amount of variation between different students. So if you look at another student's drawing, don't think because yours is completely different that it's wrong. Each one of you is going to have a completely different drawing because each one of you has brainstormed this in a different way. And you've interpreted the requirements in different ways. And that's okay. I certainly expect to see that. And if you have any questions, please let me know.